just as Jesus died and has risen again, so through Jesus, God will be, bring with him those who have fallen asleep as in Adam all die, so also in Christ will all be brought to life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, in their communion with the Holy Spirit, be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, today we gather with the Universal Church to celebrate the commemoration of All Souls Day, in which we gather as a people of faith, as a people of hope, trusting in the resurrection, trusting that Jesus has conquered death, and through his conquering death, all of us have life. And so as we gather here this morning, let us first and foremost gather and place ourselves before God's presence, asking for forgiveness and pardon, for our God is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us all eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have been victorious over death. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is de deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as a sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only days and, good and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
Hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, each year the church gives us this special day in which we remember all those who have gone before us those who have been called to the Father's house. It is an opportunity that each of us has to not only remember them, but more importantly to pray for them, that they will arrive at their eternal banquet. We pray that they may arrive to the feast which Jesus himself has prepared for each of them. How appropriate it is, therefore, for us to hear the words of Jesus in the gospel just proclaimed. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me. How comforting it should be for us to hear these words from the Good Shepherd, for in fact, that is the reason why we gather here today, aware that none of our family members or friends have been lost, but rather that they have been victorious with Jesus Christ. While it is true that our loved ones have died, it is also true, true that in their death, they died with Jesus, who is the source of life. Hence, they have a share with him in his resurrection. And Today, we gather as a people of hope, as a people of faith, asking our God to receive them in the Father's house, in that special place that he himself prepared for them. As I reflected these last few days on today's Mass, I thought about those in my own life whom I have lost and how I can never and will never forget them. I reflected on each of those memories that I shared with my deceased loved ones. I reflected on each of those moments when they touched my life and really how much I missed them. I have to be honest, though. As I reflected on each of these memories, on each of these things, there were moments of joy, memories that brought even a smile to my face, even a giggle, 
and perhaps even a laugh now and then, thinking of all these beautiful memories. But there were those memories that also brought a tear to my eye and a sad face, because those I have lost are no longer with me. It is these moments of tears and sadness when I think I prayed the most for my loved ones, because it is these moments that I recall our beautiful Christian faith, that I recall God's love for each of us. It is these moments that I pray that all of my loved ones make it to the heavenly banquet, to that place that Jesus has gone ahead of us to prepare. My dear brothers and sisters, the reason I pray, and the reason why we all pray, is because we all want our loved ones to be at that special table, because we all want to see them again. We want to enjoy their company once more in the Father's house. And the reality is that in a few moments, we will get a foretaste of what that gathering at the eternal banquet is all about. For as our Eucharistic theology so beautifully teaches us, we will join them in what has been called the Feast of Heaven and Earth. In a few moments, as all of us gather here in this hall and outside and at home in social media, we will recite those beautiful words, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Yet we will not be singing on our own, but as our liturgy so beautifully says it, we will be joined by the countless hosts of angels, the saints, and those who have gone before us and are now enjoying God's presence, seeing him face to face. To put it in a very simple way, currently in heaven, there is a great, awesome party that is going on. And as we prepare to enter the Eucharistic liturgy in just a few brief moments, I'm not kidding you when I say that all of us gathered here are going to go and crash that party. All of us will be joined and bring with us our prayers for those who are already there, singing unseasonally, with the choirs of angels and saints. We will gather trusting in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has given us all life in him, eternal life. We will gather, my dear friends, in just a few brief moments to offer our prayers for all of our deceased ones, knowing that they are now enjoying that eternal party forever in heaven with God. Eternal life be granted unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them forever. And may the souls of all the faithful departed, by the mercy of God, rest in peace. And now we stand. And let us turn to our merciful Father with our prayer and our petitions. For the church, may the Holy Spirit guide her in proclaiming the truth of salvation and the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may the Holy Spirit be with them and bless them with fortitude and their efforts to protect life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, may, they, may the healing presence of God bring them comfort and peace today and always. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, may the Lord strengthen us in virtue. May he give us the courage to overcome the sorrow and the mourning of our lost loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, especially those whom we have inscribed in our All Souls Day Novena. May they rest joyfully in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For those prayers which we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your son to save us. Hear and answer all of our prayers this day as we seek to do your will always. And we offer them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. are you Lord God of all creation through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be given up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. 
bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of our mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live, and whoever and everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever. May be seated. Before the final blessing, wanted to let you know that we will be having a second Mass this evening at 6 p.m. here in the hall as we continue to pray for our deceased loved ones. Um, there are two exceptions. Normally, the church says that we should go to Mass only 
once a day um, and gives an exception for twice, you know, if you're doing something else. But the only two days, there's two exceptions for in the liturgical year where the church uh, actually doesn't only allow but invites people to go to Mass more than once. The first one being Christmas, because if you go on the Christmas Eve, you still can go for Mass of the day. And the other exception that the church does in the liturgical calendar is All Souls Day because of the encouragement to pray for the all of our faithful departed. So those are the two exceptions that the church makes in you know going that you don't need special permission uh, for going to Mass. So we will have a second Mass here at Corpus Christi uh, this evening at 6 p.m. The other thing is we did do a, a change uh, because it's, it's getting a little bit colder, um, and so we moved inside the hall, and then I came out of the house, and I noticed that it's very warm outside. So if uh, you ever uh, want to make God laugh, just tell him your plans, and he'll switch them for you. But So that's why we did the move there because we were able to fit 100 people here. And then outside, we're still, as it gets colder, we're still under, um, you know, that kind of that breezeway. Um, and, and we also have sound system outside for those people that still want to stay kind of very far away. So you should be able uh, to hear us because I think Don Osaki, you should be able to hear me. Wave at me if you can hear me, Don. So he can hear me, and he's like on the other side of the parking lot, so. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal mystery, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfamable goodness he created the human race. And in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon of our sins, and to all the dead a place of light and peace. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Outside, we won't let you come back in because we have to sanitize.